here to worship and praise the Lord because we're going to have a beautiful service today. Today is Women's Sunday. Let me hear you women. beautiful this morning and I am grateful to be in front of you just letting you guys know I love you pray for me because I'm nervous right now <laughs> okay we're gonna have our opening prayer from sister Gwen Sacrifice. 
wanna run over. I wanna run over. I wanna run over.
also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Welcome to Mount Zion where you were loved here or what? And ain't nobody gonna run you off. Amen. Every first Sunday is our communion Sunday. Amen. And every second Sunday, like today, is the women of Zion. Women, let me hear you. And every third Sunday, it's our men of Abraham. Men, where you at? And every fourth Sunday, is our future. Let's give it up for our youth this morning. You guys should be on your feet for our youth. Oh my, oh my, amen, amen. We're going to start off with our awesome Bible study, study every Thursday night at 7 p.m. If you do not come, you're truly missing a treat. You're really, in a, you're, you're, everything is broken down for you. Yes, sir. So you can write notes and you can go back and recall on it. Amen. 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 Every Monday night is our men of Abraham Bible study and their prayer. These beautiful men, men, these handsome men, I'm sorry. These handsome men in the audience, they can get you. Men, can you raise your hand that are on the line already? If you look around the room and if, you're, if your hand is not raised, that means you need to get on the line with these men. Get on the line. God is moving through these men of Abraham. Amen. Every Tuesday night is the praise team debriefing, Bible study, and practice. We got a three whammer. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And every Wednesday night is our youth Bible study. Amen. You guys are the week of praise the Lord, everybody. The Youth Ministry will have our Vacation Bible Study um, the week of the July 17th, so mark your calendar. And we're going to do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for service. And then on Tuesday and Thursday, we have someone coming in to render our young people lessons on how to play piano. And there will be several set up. So come out the whole week and fellowship with us. And also on the 15th, we'll be at Cornelia Ministries for a backpack giveaway. So mark your calendars accordingly. Amen. Come on and clap your hands this morning. Amen. Amen. Do we have any visitors today? If so, one, one more thing before we announce the visitors. Amen. We got our first family appreciation that is coming up. Amen. If you have not received your obligation paper, please see Sister Regina after service. Amen. Amen. To get one of those papers. If not, I do have a paper that we can make copies. Amen. Amen. But our obligation, you can pay a little bit on it Amen. until next year. Amen. I'm excited about our new home. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, is there any visitors today? We want to welcome you to Mount Zion. Oh, come on, Mount Zion. Y'all know what we do. Y'all sleep this morning. Come on, Mount Zion. Listen, listen. Special way we welcome our visitors here at Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church. Say one, two, three. The song says it's good to see you. Come on. to the service of the Lord and welcome to Mount Zion. Come on Zion, touch the name and say, it's good to see you. Come on. Tell them, welcome to the service of the Lord and welcome to Mount Zion. Come on Zion, third time, rock with it. Pastor, you ain't rocking hard enough. I see you, man of God. Come on. And welcome to Mount Zion. Come on, Zion. Turn that thing around. And welcome to Mount Zion. Come on, welcome to the service of the Lord. Welcome to Mount Zion. Last time 
in the community as well. So now we can bow our heads to say a prayer for our offering. Lord, we thank you for this offering. We thank you for the hands that blessed us with this offering. We bless, thank you for the ones that was not able to give but wanted to give a prayer of offering. We take all greater things in all forms, Lord. And we know that whatever was put in here now, that we have greater to come. And I just want to thank you, Lord, in your son Jesus' name we pray and pray for this offering. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Gladys. Y'all warm enough? Because it's going to get a little bit warmer. <laughs> now, I'm going to bring up the praise team, the best, best praise team on this side of heaven. The best one. Did I mess up? The best, the greatest on this side of heaven. Oh, come on and clap your hands. How many know that Jesus is the real this morning? I need you on your feet this morning. Come on and clap your hands. 
give you praise to And now we're going to have words of encouragement. And we're going to have it from a young lady that came to this church. And all I know I did, I hugged her. And the spirit was real. I'm older than this young lady. But she's actually my little big sister. I'm grateful. I was nervous. She prayed for me in the bathroom this morning. She's a wonderful woman of God. And I'm truly blessed and honored to have her beside all of us in this church, in this kingdom. Welcome. If you don't mind, please stand. Because this sister does a lot. She does a lot. Clap, put them hands together from Sister Teresa. Good morning, Mount Zion. How y'all doing today? So I had the opportunity to attend uh, the first, well, my first women's meeting. And uh, one of the questions that was asked of the ladies was, what was your purpose? And some of the ladies knew and some of them didn't know. And so when I was chosen to do the words of encouragement and I, I went home and the Lord dropped this in my spirit. And so since this is Women's Day and the women have been holding it down, I got to say that we're doing that thing this morning. Yes, it's hot in here, but it ain't the heat. I'm just saying. So I dedicate this poem to the women of Zion. Amen. Have you ever just Took a, taking a moment to just reflect on where you've been, you know, how you journey through your journey in Christ and you look at, you know, how far you've come. And you might not be where you want to be, but you're sure not where you used to be. And every now and again, I know like my sister was nervous and the enemy was trying to come and attack her. And I said, no, we're not doing that. And so... With God, what I've learned is that sometimes the enemy wants to come in and ask, who do you think you are? And those are the times, my sisters, where we pull our shoulders back and we look the enemy in the eye and we say, we are the daughters of Zion. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And our Father Abba knows our innermost being full well. We are the daughters of Zion. Though we may stumble, sometimes we may fall. Sometimes we may be broke, but we are never broken. We are the daughters of Zion. And during those times where we fall, one thing I love about the Lord is that our names are engraved in the palm of his hands. And even though when we're down, don't count us out just yet. Because the Lord will look to the right hand where Jesus sits and says, go and see about my child. And the comforter will come. And when the comforter comes and he sees you down and he'll say to you, rise, Talitha. Get up. Walk in your purpose. Walk in the calling that God has called you. Fulfill your assignment. Do what the Lord has called you to do. Rise, Talitha, rise. And walk in who God has called you to do. And so I challenge every woman of Zion today. You have done what God has called you to do. You might have been nervous. You might have been scared. You might have thought you didn't have the capability, but you proved the enemy wrong. And so I say to you, my sisters in Christ, rise, Talitha, rise. We are the daughters of Zion. Reach out to her to ask the question. That's how much she does. 
does. Sometimes hard work go unnoticed. But as long as she's a woman of Zion and is in this house of the Lord, I'm going to always, we're going to always acknowledge the president of woman of Zion that's going to read us our scripture today. Just examine it. The scripture will be coming from the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Once you have found it, please say amen. Colossians. And I will read Colossians 2. Verses 8 to 10. 8 to 10. <laughs> and the scripture reads, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. I have read to you again Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Jamie. It's finna get hot now, y'all. <laughs> that was just a pre-trial right there. Now it's time for the word. So if you got your fans, fans. If you need one, usher get one to them. But it's time for the man of the hour. Now this gentleman no need no introduction because when he walk in the room with his attire it speaks for itself this gentleman that take care with his lovely wife person lady all take care of our children that Bible study this man gonna give you the word so I hope you read it so we're going to be on time. So I need everybody, if you can and you will, if you need help, I'll come help you. But I need everybody on their feet. And I need you to say these words right now. Pass the off. Preach the word. Pass the off. Preach the word. Another day that the Lord has kept me. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. this morning with my 
Thank God for my wife, Amen. my son over there, who couldn't beat drums 10 years ago, but he's holding his own now. I thank God for my other son out there, Maurice, and all these preachers and these deacons that I know have prayed for me. If you have your Bibles, and I hope that you do, come and go with us to Psalms 142. Psalms 142, we're going to start at 1, and we're going to stop at Psalms 142 and 4. 142, 1 through 4. When you have found it, please stand. If you need more time, say, wait, please. Psalms 142, 1 through 4. And we have found it, please stand. In the presence of the one and true living God. Because if you go in the Judge Judy courtroom, you're probably going to stand. Amen? Amen? And it reads, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord, I did make my supplications. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed with, within me, then thou knowest my path. In the way wherein I walk, have they probably laid a snare for me. Verse 4. I looked on my right hand, and behold, beheld, but there was no man that would know me. 
Refuge fail me. No man cared for my soul. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This book was written by David. Matter of fact, David read many of these books. But we're going to talk briefly about today. What moves you? What moves you? What moves you? What moves you? What is it that calls you to do what you do? Amen? Amen. Now, about this book, there are six. David was in a cave running. David was dealing with something that physicalness couldn't help him. David had a spiritual problem. So in this cave, he cried unto the Lord. He made his supplication. He poured out his complaint. He showed his voice. He looked for help and found none and settled it that God was his only help. This cave probably was the cave of Adullam or in Jedi. That's 2 Samuel, 1 Samuel 24 and 1 Samuel 22. But no matter the cave, we got to focus on these last six words that we just read in Psalms 142 and 4. No man cared for my soul. In this particular set of words, these six words are one of the most saddest set of words in the Bible outside of depart from me, I know you not. And the only time you're going to hear that set of words is when you die and stand again. And it's going to be too late to get it right. But this set of words, no man careth for my soul, is sad. He said, with these six words in mind, and with the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, I want to ask you this question this morning. What moves you? What moves you? There's a lot of things that move us, but what really moves your soul? Have you ever heard a little small, calm voice in your mind say, do this for somebody? Pray for somebody? Or somebody come along and, and, and say, well, I need you to pray for so-and-so, and your response is, the Lord ain't told me that. He just did. Okay. He just did. What moves you? Why is it we reject instructions from God when it comes from a person we can't hardly deal with? Uh -huh. Huh? What's the problem here? What moves us? What does it? He said, wait a minute, back up. Let's look at it. Luke 14 and 23. You can check it because I might quote it wrong. But it says, and the Lord said unto the preachers, the deacons, the pastors, the evangelists, the first ladies, go out into the highways. And he, No, he don't say that. He says, and the Lord said unto the servant. Am I talking to some servants today? Am I really talking to some? I need to know before I go on. Am I talking to some servants of the most high God today? Because if I am, this is for you. He said, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Now, we're not talking about church membership. We're talking about kingdom citizenship. Huh? No man cared for my soul. He says, what does it or what would move you to care for people? Not just for your friends, family, loved ones, but for someone that you never see. Someone you might not see no more. What moves you? Why haven't the Lord told you to pray for a stranger? Why haven't the Lord told you to ask that stranger, are you saved? Huh? Why haven't the Lord told you that? Questions that make you go, hmm. There's a lot of them in here. See, when I read this, it whooped me left, right, up, and down because I saw Marvin in this. Yeah. I ain't talking to y'all. I'm talking to myself right now. This is me the Lord is talking about. 
No man cared for his soul. He says, I don't know about you, but this verse moved me. What this verse is saying, there was no person, in, there, there was a person in need. The need was not physical, but a spiritual need. He states, I looked everywhere and there was no one. And we be around people all day, every day. And they got holes in their souls. They looking for someone. But we talk about everything else but what God say talk about. Y'all should have been in Sunday school this morning because it was all. Uh, uh, what kind of influence do you have on the unsaved folks in the world? What kind of influence do you have on struggling believers who are struggling in their walk with Christ? What kind of influence you got on them? And then we had a destiny to call them and talk about everything but the right thing. What, oh, wow. what kind of influence are we? do we have in this word of God on the world? We see all the killing going on. You turn around in somebody's driveway, you're liable to get shot. You knock on the door because of a concern and you will get shot. What moves us? My God. Huh? He says, he states, I'm going to read this again. I looked everywhere and there was no one. Not one person who cared for me. Not one person who would share with him the gospel. But we will share the gospel. In a minute. Right by and see me or one of these preachers up here too long outside talking with the opposite sex. We don't know who the opposite sex is and watch you pick your phone up and call somebody. You might have enough nerve to call one of our wives on us. Not knowing it could be my sister. It could be my auntie. But all you do is want to spread gossip and not the gospel. Huh? Can I get an amen up here? What moves you? Why are you sitting like a knot on the law? When souls are dying and going to hell. Hell is real, saints. You die without Christ. You're going to close your eyes on this side and open your eyes on the other side. Either you're going to be looking up or you're going to be looking down. And if you're looking up, you in trouble. Yes. Heaven is up. Hell is down. He says, not one person who cared enough to give so that someone would go and share the gospel with. He came up with the sad conclusion no one cares for his soul. No one cared if he went to heaven or hell. Back in the day, when cornbread was running things. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I run things. I would easily turn in a couple thousand dollars in two, three days. Running things. A brother came and knocked on my door about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He said, hey, man, I need this. I said, I got it. What it's going to cost? I told him the price. He said, thank you, and walked off. I'm getting ready to close up shop because what he bought put me over my limit for the day. By 7.30, he knocked again. We got to care for people's soul. That's where I'm trying to get you to. 7.30, he knocked on my door. I said, you're back? <laughs> my pocket started itching. He said, yeah, man, I want to tell you something. I said, what? He said, that what I bought from you today, it was for me. I said, hey, man, you pay for it. I don't care who it's for. He said, but I got to tell you this. I said, okay. God can use you. He witnessed to my soul, D. I didn't reject him. I said, okay, brother, thanks. Five years later, after I had got saved, right by his mama house, tears in my eyes. I said, hey, man, thank you. I'm saved now. And I'm on my way to church. He started crying. He cared enough of my soul to share the good news with me. Can I get a witness here? What moves you? This brother done spent good money with me to purchase some, some stuff. Y'all really want to know what I was doing? I ain't telling you. He really, really, really supported my pockets. But he came back with a message from God. I had enough sense not to reject what he said. What moves you? What moves you? He says, 
And no one, and no one cared for my soul. Then I asked myself, studying this, I asked myself a, a question. As a member of the Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church, under the leadership of Pastor Stanley Murray, I asked myself, are we really concerned about the souls of others? Wow. Are we really concerned about that? Well, since I'm at this church, and I know I got a, a not a 100% concern, because that's why this pulled me like it did, but I do have a concern for souls. Yeah. So I had to say, yes, we do. Uh -huh. Another question. Does the mount care if the unsaved die in their sins to spend eternity in hell? I had to answer that question, yes. Now, I don't know about the church on the corner down around the street. I don't know what they believe, but this church, we got a great concern about souls. When a Christian brother fall, I'm going to reach out to him. But when a soul come in here, I'm going to make sure they feel welcome. I didn't know Pastor Avery that was your nephew. But as soon as I saw him, I snatched his hand. Uh -huh. Trying to make him feel as welcome as I could because he could have had suicide on his mind. Uh -huh. And a mean man up here talking to him, trying to get him a fit. Man, what you doing here? What? He could have left him with suicide on his mind. Uh -huh. What moves us? To be mean and cruel to people. Right. What moves us not to share the good news of the gospel? He says, does, the, the, do, does our church mm -hmm. care that the lost die? Lost that are lost forever? Do you really oh. care about the people that's lost? My God. When the last time you said something to one of them? Mm -hmm. huh? We got to tell this story mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. We've been called out of darkness into the marvelous light. Sent back in darkness to be the light. Yes. What moves you? Huh? He says, there are people in our community they are saying, no one cares for my soul. Your neighbors are saying, no man cares for my soul. You got friends that say, no man cares for my soul. Your family members are saying, nobody cares for my soul. You got them family members you just don't want to witness to. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. You got to tell them. Right. Yeah. You got to tell them. You got to tell them about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done. Right. Huh? Yeah. He says right here, number one. I'm telling my little points now. And I'm almost done. Number one. Why should we care about the laws? I'm glad you asked. Because God cares yes. about the lost. Yes. God cares about the lost. He says in John 3, 14 through 17, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus and said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Mm -hmm. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh -huh. huh? For God sent not his son into this world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Y'all yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. all know that. Yeah. Why your co-workers don't know it? Oh, oh I guess we pulled ourselves up by our own bootstraps. Wow. Well, the bootstrap popped wow. on your way up. So now what you gonna do? We got to tell them, saints of God, we got to leave here and compel people to trust in the Lord. Wait a minute. I'm gonna say this. It's over there on the other page. If your lifestyle don't match up with what this word say, be quiet. But then again, don't be quiet. Brother Oz, coming from the dope man house. Yeah, I went in there to purchase. Coming out, my cousin wife had on the Days of Dukes and the Hall to Talk. Uh -huh. <laughs> Only reason I saw it, I'm going to tell you how I noticed that. I'm walking fast trying to get out of there deep. I'm I done got saved, but I ain't delivered. I don't want too many people to see me in there. As I pass by her, 
She turned around and said, Marvin, not cornbread. Marvin. I turned around and I said, hey, cuz. She said, I thought you were saved. I said, I am saved. She said, oh, she went on way and I went my way. But I was convicted. Suppose I had been flipped at the lip, too ashamed to admit that I was saved and said I wasn't saved. Huh? When you deny Christ, you might be on your way to the You don't know what's going to happen. Yes, sir. Yes. But I admit it. I am saved. Yes. She didn't say, well, what you doing? She asked me, I thought you were saved. Yes. Huh? Yes, sir. How many times you be in a situation you really don't want nobody to know you're saved? If you're in that situation where you don't know about, don't want nobody to know you're saved, get out of that situation. Because when you deny Christ here, he's going to deny you there. You better recognize. We should care about the loss because God cares. Number two. Why should we care about the loss? I'm glad you asked again. Because Jesus cared about the loss. Watch this here. He says in Romans 5, 6 through 9, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a God good man, someone would even dare to die. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Huh? I was trying to kill myself. But Christ died that I might live. Huh? He died. He says much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from his wrath through him. See, we always talking about that goodness of Jesus and all that he's done and how good he is and how he... Can anybody in here tell me about the wrath of God? Yeah. Have anybody ever experienced his wrath and lived to tell about it? Come on, help somebody. He do have a wrath. Yes, he does. Pastor Bishop called it, um, Pastor Kimmel called it the otherness of God. It's another side of God that we don't really want to deal with. So what moves us well, y'all should have been in Sunday school this morning. He said, someone care for you. If the Godhead, if the Godhead care for you, what's our problem, saints? Why number four? Why should we care about the loss? Same question. God cared about the loss. Jesus cared about the loss. And the Holy Spirit cared about the laws. Yes. Huh? Yes. The Holy Spirit. Revelation 22, 17 says, And the Spirit and the bride say, okay. Come. And let him that hear say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Our responsibility as believers is to come. Bring people in. Yeah. Now that we we we'll love, we'll love to have all of them at the mount. But it ain't about the mount. No, Not church membership, kingdom citizenship. Yeah. We are all going to die and go either up or down. Right. We're going to leave here. But how you leave is so important. He said the Godhead care for you. And at least one person. Come well, on. who is that one person that cared for me? Well, let's talk about the rich man uh -huh. over there in the book of Luke. Watch what the rich man says to Abraham after he was in hell. Watch what he said. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers. Five, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. The rich man cared about some souls. He in hell cared about it. We up here right now, what is our problem? Huh? See, this is how I was talking to myself. 
My wife went home, so I had a full-fledged conversation with me. <laughs> what is my problem? Why won't I hear I'm on some medication? <laughs> what is the problem, saints? I heard him. I heard him. Okay. Listen, if God and the rich man cares about the eternal destiny of the souls of mankind, the question is, why are we so uncaring, indifferent, or unconcerned about doing whatever it takes to save souls? Well, brother preacher, that's not my gift. It sure isn't. It, it's not a gift. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, huh? teaching them to observe. See, the first teach means to make disciples. The second teach means to get them up in here and show them how to live. Huh? It's not a gift. It's a command. Huh? We talk about them heaps. And them nuggets. And I don't even answer the phone my mother-in-law called no more, D. Because she really getting on my nerves. <laughs> Every team she picked win, the mind lose. Football, she win, I lose. What is going on? She said, you need to join in with me. I can't do it. Huh? We got to get to the place where we are not ashamed of the gospel. Yes. But it is the power of God. Huh? Why you sit on your tongue? Wow. Holy Ghost be telling you, say something. Huh? Say something. I said later, boy, don't wait on my way to Bible study. No dope deal in the neighborhood. Every time I see him, the Holy Ghost say, tell it. What I did for you. Tuesday night I'm going to Bible study. The Holy Ghost said, tell him. He was right at the car window. I got home from church. He had got shot 15 times. Wow. Dead. I cried for two weeks, Keith. It broke my heart because I was disobedient what God wanted me to do. I said, Lord, if you give me another chance, I tell any and everybody, you better recognize you might run into me in the mall somewhere praying for somebody. Huh? You might run into me anywhere, lifting up the name of Jesus to somebody. Yeah. Because I am not ashamed yeah. of the gospel. Yeah. Huh? I'm not ashamed of this. Yeah. Why are you ashamed? Yeah. Oh, that's not my gift. It is your gift to tell somebody yeah. about the goodness of Jesus and all that yeah. he can do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Why, don't Why don't we care mm -hmm. about lost souls? Well, right here it says, I want you to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you right now in answering, why don't I care about lost souls? Mm -hmm. Maybe you work too much. Too much entertainment. Sports. Lack of faith. Just too tired. All of them sound like excuses to me. Because if you're working too much, you're around a lot of unsaved people. If you're working too much. Huh? If you're working too much, you're, a lot, you're around a lot of saints that are dealing with issues. If you're working too much. If you're somewhere entertaining yourself, like the Strawberry Festival. I heard you when you announced it. That sister there was at the Strawberry Festival with us. We cut up real good around her. And then I was disobedient. When we got ready to depart from each other, the Holy Ghost said, pray with them. And I didn't. We walked off. I said, good God Almighty, if I see her again, I'm going to get her. Right around the corner, they were standing. And you know what I did. We went right over to all of us, joined hands in the middle of the Strawberry Festival. People all around. And we called on the name of Jesus. What hinders you? Why won't we do it, saints? Why won't we do it? Why won't we so win for Christ? Why? 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 Well, I'm going to give you one why. Maybe when it all boils down, we don't really believe in God's word. I didn't say you want to say I didn't say that. But if you believe what God's word says, it ought to prompt you uh -huh. to do something. Uh -huh. Motivate you to do something. Uh -huh. When I get bored cutting yards, I just go get a new piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. 
It motivates me to go a little further. Yeah. Last time I needed a new piece of equipment, I ain't had no money to buy. So I struggled for a little while because I was getting bored and tired of doing it. Here come a big lomo. And now I'm motivated. What moves you when it comes down to what this word of God says? Now, what moves you, saints? What moves you? Don't tell me. Don't answer out loud. Because the Holy Ghost already know yes. your answer. Yes. Yes. You might can fool me, but you can't fool him. Amen. See, we get caught up in too much of this secular stuff. Huh? Too much conversation that don't mean nothing. Right. See, tag on the front of my church, on the front of my truck. The gospel, the gossip, I mean the gospel, not the gossip. Mm -hmm. yeah. What does the gossip do for you? Huh? Just tears down the gospel elevate. Why? I keep asking, why won't we tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus? Why? Why? Are we ashamed of this gospel? Huh? I didn't really want to preach this. I'm telling y'all. I said, Lord, they're going to think I'm bashing you. They're going to think I'm giving them a hard time. Trying to put myself in a place of I'm better than y'all. I'm not better. This thing whooped me like my mama used to get me. I'm guilty. Oh, yeah, the shag with me. I'm guilty. He says, Do you know if we are not sharing the gospel with the lost, we are living in sin? Sin is disobeying the Lord. And when we are living in sin, our prayers are not heard. That thing you keep praying for, and God ain't moved yet. You ain't talking to nobody. Wow. Huh? And you ain't listening to God because you're doing a lot of talking to God, but you're not doing enough listening. He's trying to tell you to go ye therefore and teach somebody, disciple somebody. Huh? Bring somebody to the fold. But you stare the crown about your situations and your circumstance. God already know what you're dealing with. God already gonna deliver you from what you're going through. You just got to do what God says do. Huh? What moves you? He says, and when we are living in sin, our prayers are not heard. When we are living in sin, we cannot have fellowship with the Lord. You can fake it till you make it. But you won't make it faking it. Fake it. Fool me. Run around the church crying. I'm going to be praising God with you. But you can't fool the Holy Ghost. He already know. He already know. He says, when we are living in sin, the Lord cannot bless us. Get passed by that promotion on your job all the time. Check the line. Stop worrying about it because it's a person of another color. The boss man cousin. The manager's best friend. Stop worrying about all that. It's between God and you. That's why we can't get elevated like we want. Because your boss man is unsafe. You talk to him about everything. Huh? But you won't talk to him about our risen Savior. Well, my brothers and sisters, I can tell. I'm getting on some nerves. <laughs> and I'm almost done. He says, when we are sharing the gospel, people cannot, I mean, people when we are not sharing the gospel, people cannot get saved. And if people are not getting saved and lives being changed, they are going to spend all eternity in a place call hell. Yeah. But my brothers yes, and my sisters, yes, wait a minute. A I have some good news. Yeah. We don't have to go to hell. 
because there is one and his name is Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins he's the same Jesus that traveled 40 and two generations sounds like he cared for me he's the same Jesus that stopped by the manger he walked the dusty roads of Jerusalem he healed the sick he raised the dead turned water into wine and he gave sight to the blind sounds like he cares for me they led him from judgment hall to judgment hall he didn't say a mumbling word they beat him all night long no he didn't say a mumbling word they led him out of the east gate of the city of a hill called Calvary with an old rugged cross on his shoulder they laid that cross down laid Jesus on that cross they nailed him in his hand they nailed him in his feet but I heard Jesus say go ahead cause you better not lift me up because if you lift me up I'll draw all men unto me they dropped that cross in a six foot hole he stayed on that cross from the sixth to the ninth hour he died he died he died until heaven was satisfied there was a soldier at the foot of the cross uh, pierced him in his side uh, water uh, and blood gushed out uh, the soldier said uh, surely uh, this must be uh, the son of God my brothers and my sisters that's not the end of the story they took him down uh, put him in a bar tune uh, he stayed there all night Friday all day Saturday all night Saturday night but early Sunday morning he got up all power healing power get right power do right power love right power heal right power my brothers and sisters what moves you he will take a way out of nowhere what moves you why you haven't told nobody about your Jesus. You can see it, say, he'd rather see it than to hear it. My other brother say, the most powerful sermon you will ever preach in your life will never come from right here. It's how you live when you get out there. Yes. Yes. We got to be walking in principles. We may be the only Bible that they ever read and if they read in your life and it does not say I love the Lord then your life is leading somebody down the wrong path so if you are here and you don't know Jesus and there is a hole in your soul he's the only one can plug it gorilla glue don't work super glue don't work you can stick all kinds of paper in there and put some plaster. It don't work. If you want to mend that heart of yours, you got to try Jesus because he's all right. So if you are here and you're not saved and you know for sure if you die right now, you're going to be in some big trouble. Please come. Don't put it off. Come. Well, if you're here and you got your own church on, and you want to rededicate your life to Christ, become a member of this great church, the Mount, where we do care about your soul. Yes, sir. You can come now. It don't matter. Whatever the reason you come down, we want some prayer. We got some prayer warriors in here. We'll pray that situation out of here. Can I get a witness now? But the number one thing is, if you are not saved, Please don't go home and try to get ready to get saved. Because it's not like getting ready to come to church. It's not like getting ready to go to work. 
You better get your life together with Christ right now. If you're not faithful and committed to the church you belong to, you are wrong. You are wrong. Let's be real. Bible study in Sunday school, we got the same crew. Same crew. Every now and then a new one will come in. But we got members that show up on Sunday and won't come back the next Sunday. How in the world you eat one meal a week and don't starve to death before the next time you eat? Your soul is hungry. Your soul is starving. And you won't come and feed it. Well, I can get it at home. My Bible tells me, forsake not the assembly of yourself together, which means come to church. What's the problem? You ain't mad at the pastor because you're here today. You ain't mad at me because I know I ain't did nothing to you. Whatever is causing you to be pulled away from Sunday, Sunday, Bible study, Sunday school, you got to make something. And one day a week, Pastor all week, one day a week, maybe, maybe, that's why it's a problem for you witnessing somebody out there. Tell them about Jesus, how good he is. You got to know what you're talking about. Be careful what you get off in the internet. Yeah, hell, you thinking you don't have to come. And just tell somebody Jesus loves me, and that's it. It's like a newborn baby, and I'm done. When my son was a baby, I had him in the high seat. About a dozen chicken legs I had just took out the grease. And I put it right there. He did everything he could to get to it. He didn't have no teeth, so I know he couldn't eat it. But let me put them same chicken legs in front of that boy over that night. And come back. They'll be all gone. And what am I saying? You got to grow in this word. You got to grow. So are you growing in this word? Are you growing? If you're not growing, you better do something about it. God bless you.
for the word. This morning, amen, what moves you? Amen. And as they was praying for these two young ladies up there, God began to speak to me. They need someone, they need some lady from this ministry to reach out to them. My God. Throughout the week. different coming from mama but what about a young lady don't have nobody to reach out to and we only see them on Sunday mornings and we don't realize what they're going through to the rest of the week what moves you that's all just talked about it who are we reaching out to throughout the week to say I'm just checking on you because it's not always about us. These young ladies are hurt. And some of the young men as well. I purpose in my heart, I try to reach out to somebody in this ministry every single week. But what about somebody who don't have no one? And they're struggling. They're suffering in silence. held accountable. What moves you? I watched Amber struggle all service long. She needs someone to pour into her. cry right among us and we say well praise God we're just grateful amen grateful for the word amen how God you trust all he probably didn't want to preach this word because he was a nervous wreck sitting up here his legs would stay in one place but when you're called to speak and preach the word of God, if you're not nervous, something's wrong with you. I don't care how, how, how often you stand up here. When you have to stand before God's people, and if you're not going through something while you sit here, something's wrong. We, we thank God, amen, for using him this morning. Thank God for Sister Gracie this morning. Amen. How God used her. Amen. God is doing something great right here in this little bitty old hot church. As I said this morning, if you think you're hot right now, don't miss heaven. Because hell's a hot lot of this. Amen. So we're grateful, amen, as the women come back to close it out. I'm not sure who has a closing prayer. But um, as they come back, amen.
it is the seniors are actually doing it. Most heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to say thank you for this unity, God. Father, we thank you for the word that has been spoken on today, oh heavenly Father. Father, we ask you that it may be great on our hearts right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, that we may be challenged, charged, and changed. And we are grateful today for the unity again, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love some.